Hey, what's up guys? Hope everyone's doing really, really well, enjoying their summers. It's a really, really hot day here today. I think I've been reading a little too many articles about climate change and every time it gets really hot, I think the world is gonna end soon and I'm freaking myself out, but that's a topic for another day. Anyways, so for this video, I wanted to break down another very abstract concept, the concept of learning. We all know that learning is good. You should be doing it all the time, 24 seven, but I just wanted to break it down a little further and be more specific with it. And I think most people can relate to the word learning, but I think for this video and some of the stuff we're gonna talk about, a more accurate word is growing. So you can grow academically, you can grow socially, you could grow spiritually, and there's always more than one way to do that. So for this video, I brainstormed seven, seven different ways of learning or seven different ways of growing, and we're just gonna talk straight through them, all right? So without further ado, let's do it. First and easiest, most intuitive, straightforward, and simple way of learning that we're gonna talk about real quickly is learning by doing. Not gonna spend so much time here, but this is the core of usually everything and the most effective way for 99% of people to learn and grow in different ways. You just gotta do it, right? So you have to, that's taking the new project in, in school or doing that new project at work or doing that side project, learning that new framework, like following that online course and just doing it, right? So this is what's most relatable, easiest. If you do it, you will learn it, all right? so. That's point number one, let's just get that out of the way. Okay, so the second second really important and close complement to point number one is learning by research. And this is really, really, really important. The reason why this is so important is because you cannot put too much blind faith in just doing it and having that be the most effective way. Because if you just pound it out, if you just try to do everything, like if you're trying to learn web development, you've made a list of 100 things and you just wanna do everything, that's not gonna be a very effective way of learning because you have no context. What I mean by context in this case is that when you decide that you want to learn something or you wanna grow in a specific area, you have to understand the surrounding pros and cons about that, the history about it, and just the overall general context, big picture view of what you're trying to do. So for example, if you're trying to become a web developer, you should understand what that means. Understand the internet, understand where web browsers come from, understand like kind of the evolution of JavaScript, whatever, just get a little more like research oriented concept of what's surrounding it and don't just jump into learning like the latest and greatest framework. So this is equally important because it's gonna really supplement your doing part and direct you in the right way. So with that said, I wanna talk about two, two major types of research material. And when I say research material, what I really mean is just reading stuff. All this comes down to is just actually reading. And I have two major categories, two broad categories of reading material. The first category is reference style. And I have an example here, but this is gonna be a little dry, but it's still really important. You always need reference style books, like big old books like this. You could use Google, but you could, it's just like reference material. I'm trying to learn Java, so I picked up this big ass Java book, but those type of books are a little more binary. It's just like, here are the features of the language, here's how the language evolved. It's just like boom, 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 reference. The second type of reading, which is equally important and a little more fun, to read is the highly opinionated and subjective stuff. So those are like people's blogs, people hating on stuff, people loving stuff. Like I love React or I hate Rails. Like those subjective readings are also really important because you can get what people think. Like people have really strong opinions and you can get you know someone that loves Rails or someone that hates Rails and just read their blog posts, and see what they think. So I think aside, that type of reading is a good complement to reference style reading, but you should have both. So that's learning by research or learning by reading and always do that to supplement your number one, learning by doing. All right, let's keep it going. The third point is gonna be learning by motivation. This one is really, really important. The only thing I wanna say up front is that you gotta do number three in small doses. You can't overdo this. When I say motivation in this context, this is what people commonly you know, refer to as self-help. And it's when you hear those big motivational speeches by Tony Robbins or you read those like crazy books like help yourself, 
work four hours a week. Those are just like motivational things by external parties. So all of us need that. I need a lot of that every now and then. You probably need a lot of that every now and then. We only have so much self-motivation, but every now and then it's good to have some external motivation. You watch an inspirational talk, watch like a motivational video. It does help sometimes, but you can't rely on that 100% of the time. The one thing that you should be very careful of, so let's just take an example. You love Tony Robbins, so you watch a lot of Tony Robbins videos on YouTube where he's pumping you up, giving you motivation, telling you how to live your life. But the one thing that to be careful of with all those motivational self-help videos is that it's very premeditated by the external party. When I say premeditated, all those motivational videos you might be watching of Tony Robbins, that's actually him specifically crafting some form of content to motivate you because that's his job. That's actually not the natural Tony Robbins. So that's the most kind of danger point, not really a danger point, but just something you have to watch out for. Use learning by motivation is a good thing. We all need doses of that every now and then, but just remember it's premeditated. It's not exactly natural, but it's still helpful. Number four, I think this one is one of my most favorite ways of kind of picking up stuff. And I call this learning by empathy. So the whole point of learning by empathy is you want to kind of get into someone else's head and figure out how they feel, right? When I'm making this video to you, it's not actually my natural state. It's more like number three. Everything I wrote here is kind of premeditated and it's not my natural state. It's not how I interact with the day-to-day -day stuff around me. One really cool way to do number four is actually watching interviews or like watch candid videos of people you respect a lot like your role models because just an interview for example when someone's interviewing Elon Musk he probably knows the questions beforehand but the interview is interesting because the interview is more of like a personal interaction between two parties and it gets more deep into like what that person is actually thinking, how they're wired, how their brain works, and they have less time to premeditate things. So it's really interesting to see how people you respect a lot, like Elon Musk or Bill Gates, not how they you know, premeditate a speech, but watching them interact with an interviewer is especially interesting because it gets you a little insight into their brain. One thing that I thought, I thought is really cool from YouTube is that on YouTube, there's a couple candid videos like old school videos of like interactions very natural interactions there's one video of uh, Steve Jobs conducting a meeting back in the day when he's at next and it's really interesting to watch him just like actually conduct a meeting rather than him present at an Apple conference there's also this really cool motivational not really motivational but there's this old video on YouTube of Jack Ma kind of pumping up his company when they were first starting Alibaba, like back when there were like less than 10 people and he's just talking about like what he expects for the future, what's the future of Alibaba gonna be. And it's just like one of his employees like taking a candid video of him making the speech to his company. So he's not directed at you, he's directed at the company and it's completely candid. But why that video, why I like that video so much is because you get to see Jack Ma behave in his completely natural state. That's how he is as a person. And you can use that to be like, okay, that's kind of how he operates and that's really cool. Number five, number five is gonna be pretty simple. This is gonna be learning by discussion or sharing. This is a lot of peer-to-peer -peer, uh, communication, which is already really helpful. So this is like study groups, talking about your project with your friends. It's supposed to be very collaborative. You go in there with the mindset of getting some feedback, talking about how you implemented something and having just like an honest discussion and sharing environment. And I think this one is always really good because whenever you do this with another party, new issues always come up that you didn't realize first. So this one's pretty easy. Another good way of learning is just sharing what you've learned to uncover hidden stuff. Sixth way of learning is learning by teaching. And you might think this is a little similar to learning by sharing, but you, it's actually really different because your mindset is gonna be different if you try to learn by teaching. So learning by teaching, your mindset is, you have to take what you know and transplant it into someone else who has no idea on the topic. So your expectation or your mindset is gonna be one of teaching, not sharing, it's slightly different. Teaching reinforces learning a lot because it just tests your understanding of stuff. One good test is if you have a blank piece of paper, try to write down a topic that you think 
you understand. If you can't write down anything on a piece of paper, you probably don't understand it really well. If you can write down a good outline and flow, then you probably understand it really well. But one thing that's really nice is learning by teaching. So one good example of this is that I was a TA in college once and I actually was a little hesitant to be a TA because I didn't really think I understood the material a lot. But then after a lot of office hours, helping kids with, helping students with their homework and just doing that stuff over and over again and like learning it by teaching it, it actually reinforced it a lot better. So learning by teaching it is another good way to do it and you can practice on your siblings, your friends, your parents, you know, anyone. Last point I wanna make about another method of learning is learning by mentorship. So this one is actually a luxury that many of us don't have. I don't have a personal mentor of any kind. I'm sure you don't have a personal mentor of any kind. Somebody might claim to be one, but that title of mentor is a very kind of special title. And if you really have a mentor, you're probably in the 1%, you're really lucky if you have that. But for most of us, we don't have a mentor, but we don't really need a person all the time to get that same effect. So because mentorship is the most rare, in my opinion, I put it last, but it's also really important. The core idea, in my opinion, the core idea behind mentorship is that the way you learn through mentorship is heavily catered towards your specific problems. Everything else we talked about is very general, right? Just general ways of learning anything, but mentorship is different because mentorship is, the whole premise of it is that it's catered towards you as a person. It's like you have gone through this, you've learned that, you have all this other stuff going on in your life, all this very personal stuff, what can you personally do, personally do to level up? So in my opinion, that's the core concept of mentorship is that it's catered towards the individual. The best thing we can do is that if that if there's no real life person to be that mentor, you have to find that somewhere else. Usually you have to just go on the internet and look for resources. So the best way I think is that if you need very personalized uh, advice for whatever you're going through, you have to find someone else that has also gone through something similar so they can give you the most probably helpful things to think about, right? If you, if somebody is trying to mentor you and has no experience about what you've gone through, it's probably not gonna be very helpful, but you can still find tons of those resources online. Like read people's biographies. Maybe somebody, maybe a very successful person had the exact same, you know, upbringing as you did. Find that person, see what they did, like their progression and see if they have any public material out there for you. And if they do, then that's really awesome. So I don't wanna to talk too much about mentorship, but the whole premise, again, I'll just repeat it one more time, is but this is getting support or advice or help for some stuff that's very individual for what you're going through. And if that's from a person, you're really lucky. If you don't have the person, you gotta dig for that stuff. And the best way I can maybe recommend you doing that is find other people, either through your network or just cold email people, whatever it is, but try to find people that are similar, have similar backgrounds to you so they can help you through whatever you're going through. But 99.9% .9 of the time, you're not gonna find that person, so you gotta dig in public record, pretty much. You gotta dig on the internet for that stuff, but you can find it. You, it's possible to find mentorship in a book, in a YouTube video, but you just gotta look for it more specifically. All right, guys, those were the seven points that I had about different ways of learning or growing. Hopefully it wasn't too abstract. I try to be as concrete as possible, but how let's end with how best to use all this information. So everyone's going to be more inclined to do one of these things a little differently. You might be more inclined to just do everything by doing. Maybe you like doing a ton of research and not so much doing, but Whatever it is, I don't think you can really get to the next level with just one or two of these things. So if you're only just doing one of these things, I would highly consider or recommend just trying to do many of these things and see where it gets you. So I think you just have to, not that you have to do it, it's just you have to diversify the different mediums of how you approach learning. It's not just gonna be one thing. Like, of course, you'll always learn by doing, but if you really want to get to maybe the next level of whatever it is, you gotta consider a lot of possibilities. Next thing also is that it depends on the level of which you want to learn something, right? So if you're a software developer and software is your craft, that's like what you wanna be, that's like 
your soul or something like that. You might want to do all seven techniques and even more techniques, like every possible technique to be a software developer. Read a ton of books, learn a ton of things, watch software developer people talk, go to software developer meetups, teach about it, just do everything you can. But that's if you're that interested in software development, right? If you're trying to just pick up something on the side, like say you're just a software developer, you want to learn basic accounting on the side. If you just want to learn an extension of what you already know, you don't have to dive so deep into all these different mediums. You could just, if you want to learn basic accounting, you could just do a side course on it or just talk to your friends about it a little bit. So the level of which you attack or use all these different um, strategies for learning depends on the level of which you want to learn something, right? So it's either a side thing or your main thing, but use that to gauge yourself. Last thing I want to leave everyone off with is that even though all this stuff is really good, all this learning stuff is really good, don't be too eager with it. So I think this is really important, but never think or expect that you should learn everything. You should never feel like you have to spend 24 hours a day just learning, learning, learning. We all know that learning and growing is good, but there should be no expectation that you should spend every waking moment trying to learn as much as you can because there has to, be, just like with everything, there has to be a balance. So even after all this stuff I said, you know, seven different ways of learning, learn anything you want in the world, you shouldn't ever think that you have to learn 24 seven. If your mind is telling you to chill, then just go chill on a beach. You have to be content with doing nothing so that you can do the stuff you care about for long periods of time. All right guys, that's it for the video. If you enjoy this video, please press like. If you have any comments, questions, please post a comment, respond. Let's have a discussion about it. This stuff is all really abstract, but hopefully these points are gonna be helpful for whatever you're trying to pursue. All right, take care.